In this video, we are going to discuss about the Helicobacter pylori infection. It's a gram-negative bacterium with a microaerophilic nature and a distinct spiral shape as shown in the diagram. This unique morphology helps it colonize the human gastric mucosa, specifically in the antrum of the stomach. Now moving on to its virulence factors. Helicobacter pylori has several key virulence mechanisms that help it to survive and cause disease. One of the most important is urease enzyme that neutralizes stomach acid by breaking down urea into ammonia, creating a more suitable environment for bacterial growth. Another major factor is CAGA, a protein that disrupts cellular signaling and has oncogenic potential, meaning it may contribute to development of gastric cancer. Alongside this, we have VAC-A. It's a toxin that damages stomach cells and leads to inflammation. These virulence factors play a crucial role in the pathogenesis of Helicobacter pylori infections. As for its transmission, Helicobacter pylori separates primarily through the fecal oral and oral oral routes, but there is separate through contaminated food and water also. In its pathogenesis, we see this bacterium is major cause of gastritis, peptic ulcers, and in chronic cases, even gastric cancer and mold lymphoma. Now let's see the detailed infection mechanism. We know transmission route is fecal oral, oral oral, or contaminated food or water. Through this route, it enters the stomach. So here in this diagram, we have the gastric mucosa and epithelial cells lining the stomach. This part of stomach is the antrum, because it's here where the bacterium attacks. Furthermore, on gastric mucosa, we have mucus on it shown in the diagram. The pH of the stomach antrum is normally acidic, typically ranging between 1.5 and 3.5, creating acidic environment. Now in the animation, we see the helicobacter has reached the stomach. First of all, it secretes urease enzyme that acts on urea and converts it into carbon dioxide and ammonia. So this ammonia being the alkaline in nature neutralizes the stomach acid, thus creating suitable environment for pylori. After that, Helicobacter pylori uses its flagella to move and penetrates the mucus to reach the epithelial cells shown in the animation. On reaching the lining, it expresses two important molecules, BABA and SABA. Both these molecules mediates the binding of Helicobacter pylori with epithelial cells. Here in this chart, we have shown the receptors for these factors present on the epithelium. Once the firm contact is made, the expression of virulence factors is driven into two different pathways, VACA pathway and CAGA pathway. First, we see VACA is secreted by Helicobacter pylori and binds to specific receptors like RPTP alpha, RPTP beta and integrins on gastric epithelial cells. Once attached, it's taken up through endocytosis as shown in the diagram, forming vesicles inside the cell. These vesicles enlarge and fuse, leading to formation of large intracellular vacuoles, a hallmark of VAC-A action. Beyond vacillation, we see VAC-A also targets mitochondria, triggering apoptosis by releasing cytochrome C, which leads to cell death. Now moving towards the second pathway, that CAGA driven. CAGA is injected into gastric epithelial cells through a specialized type 4 secretion system, T4SS. Once inside the host cell, CAGA undergoes phosphorylation by host kinases, which allows it to interact with multiple signaling pathways. First, we see CAGA disrupt cell polarity, tight junctions, and cytoskeletal organization, leading to abnormal cell shape and increased permeability of gastric barrier. We see CAGA also alters the intracellular signaling, promoting inflammation and uncontrolled cell growth. Over the time, these changes contribute to gastritis, ulcer formation, and increase the risk of gastric cancer. If we go towards the clinical manifestations, first is the most common, which is asymptomatic colonization. 
second is progressive inflammation that leads into chronic active gastritis third is mucosal damage that leads into peptic ulcer diseases fourth is long term inflammation that leads into gastric cancer risk and we also get mild lymphoma particularly through the action of cag a so this is how we get the infection via helicobacter pylori i hope you like the video if you like it give it a thumbs up to support my work on patreon or youtube and make sure to subscribe to the channel thanks